Hey everybody, my name is Nam, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Quixo. Let's get into it. Quixo is a game that is played with 25 wooden cubes on a circular board with an inlaid square. And basically all the cubes sit in here. Each cube consists of six sides. There's four blank sides and an X and an O. So the object of the game is to get five in a row of your particular symbol. So let's pretend you are O's. You'll win once you get five O's in a row. Like so. There's 12 avenues of victory. There's the five columns, the five rows, and then the two diagonals. Quicksilver can be played with two or four players. When it's your turn, you're going to take a piece out of the outside perimeter. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and grab this. If I'm playing O's, so now I have an O, and I can't place it back there. What I have to do is actually slide any of the columns or rows so that it fills the, the gap that I just created, and then I'm going to place this piece in the new gap. So in this case, I could put this over here. I could put this over here. Or I could put this over here couple of rules for this. At this point, everything is blank, so you can select any piece. You can only select pieces that are either your symbol or blank for your turn. So let's pretend I'm playing O's, and these are all X's. I could not select any one of these pieces. So now let's pretend it's X's turn. They'll grab this. They can choose to put it in one of those three spaces that it creates. If you happen to grab a corner, there's only two options. You're either sliding this whole thing or sliding this whole thing. Now, you might come to a point where the board state will look something like this. And when it's your turn, let's pretend it's uh, O's turn. So O has to choose one that's on the outer perimeter, but it cannot choose an X. So O would have to choose one of these to move. Let's say this. And then O could slide this way, that way, or that way. Once one player gets five in a row, that player wins. It is defined in the rules that if you were to slide your opponent into a win the same turn that you would slide into a win, for example, in a situation like this, let's pretend it's O's turn. O's trying to win here. If O actually slides X into a win the same turn that they would get five in a row, X is defined as the winner. So just keep in mind that you want to solely get five in a row without sliding your opponent into uh, victory as well. Okay, multiplayer. Normally when you play this four players, you're actually going to go ahead and have two teams of two, and you're playing together with your partner. Sit across from your partner and when you actually select a cube for your team, let's pretend you're playing X. So X has to decide where to place this cube, number one, as, as usual. But then some of these blocks on all of the O and X symbols, there's actually a little dot. You can only select a cube that is blank on the top from the perimeter or a cube that is of your symbol with the dot facing you. And so that increases the complexity quite a bit. Admittedly, I've actually never played 2v2. But if we take a look here, if the board was set up like this, and the, if the two players playing X are sitting across from each other like so, then that player who's sitting over there can move any of the blank cubes for their turn or could move this X or this X. These two X's would not be allowed to be moved by that player because these dots are facing the player that's sitting this way. That is one additional complexity with 2v2 that I've never really experienced, but uh, I think would be really interesting to try out. All right, a couple of different things to remember and note. The only immediate thing you typically ever have to worry about is when they already have four in a row in a column or a row or their diagonal, 
and that's when you have to worry. This is when you'd want to do some sort of disrupting move, which breaks up the four, because if we take a look, if it's X's turn, X would actually just win by doing something like this to shove that into place and line up this five, these five. However, let's assume it's O's turn. What can O do? Well, O could actually disrupt this line of four by grabbing one from this side and sliding like so. Similarly, they could do something like this as well. It would also disrupt the four. Now, something that you can't do is remember that you can slide in either direction. So let's pretend O thought, oh, hey, this would solve the problem. But it actually doesn't because it actually slides a similar X into the place in which you're sliding out the X that you thought you would be. So you have to remember that as well. There's also blocking strategies that you can do. For example, let's pretend the board looked like this. One of the things that you can do is try and take control of two opposite sides of the crucial row or column that you need to take. O could solidify control of this by putting an O here. And so, for example, and slide it this way. So now if you take a look, X can't actually push this way, and O has control of both sides. So it's actually going to take X at least two turns to be able to move this, because X would have to do something, something like this, slide an X into place, and then do something to move this later. So a lot of the moves that you end up doing to block and control, if you can make your opponent spend more than one move to undo your one move, it's already cost effective for you. As the board gets more messy, then it's going to become more difficult to determine what the actual uh, lines of victory are, because you'll have maybe two or three, maybe even four lined up four, four in a row, or threats of four in a row. And uh, a lot of the times people will tend to miss the diagonal ones, so definitely keep those in mind as well. I'm very guilty of missing five in a row with the diagonal wins. And that's how you play Quixo. All right, we've got a couple of sample games. Let's go take a look. All right, game one. Here we go. Okay, so X makes a play to get into the corner. O gets in the opposing, not opposing corner, but like a adjacent corner. All right, X just goes in. O goes in. Man, it's really hard to commentate this. All right, so <laughs> X is trying to make a direct win uh, line just on one edge, but uh, then O changes it up to disrupt, and now it's going to get all jumbled. Okay, we've got our second piece just pushed into the center nine. And we've got three pieces covered in the center nine. Now we have an entire edge covered. Wow, this game's going a lot faster than some of the other games, so I'm going to have to actually <laughs> just talk about general things. Maybe even pause some video. All right, so as of right now, there's nothing that's four in a row uh, except for that. So X just got four in a row on the top edge, and O wisely disrupts. So one of the things that I failed to mention during the strategy uh, of the game itself is if you think you're going to be in for a long game, it behooves you to try and turn over as many blank sides as you can to your symbol because uh, there are turns in which sometimes you'll have to move an existing symbol, but there are actually open, open cubes that are already blank. So you might actually need to populate more of the board so that at least you have a fighting chance because if you spend too many turns moving symbols that are already your symbol and your opponent is actually turning over more of theirs then you'll be at a disadvantage going to the mid to late game okay so looks like o tries to do something here but fails to see that x has an avenue of winning right there all right here we go This game's going a little bit slower early. <laughs> okay, X making an obvious gun for the left edge. 
O is not going to have it, though. X is still sticking strong. It's a very obvious strategy, however. X trying to reassert. Okay, O changes it up a little bit. Hey, look, that says six. <laughs> six. <laughs> Okay, X changes the strategy, pivoting from one edge to another edge to try and gun for victory there. So as you can see, X is trying to turn over as many cubes. Actually, both players are trying to turn over as many blank cubes because they don't want a disadvantage going into the, the mid game. Sometimes it behooves you to count the number of blank pieces left in a column or row, because if you and your opponent decide to repeat trying to do the same thing, it will maybe give you an advantage um, to, depending on knowing if you're gonna be last or second last. And so you might wanna alter your strategy at that point. And X is going to make a fatal mistake. X has actually given the victory to O because of the diagonal. All right, everybody, and that's how you play Quixo. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, found that useful, and everybody, you have a glorious day. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Okay, are we recording? All right, we're recording. Let's... Yay! Okay. Gonna start off there. All right. Just so you know, for video, you would have needed to take this one, then turn oh. it, and then slide it. Scratch that. <laughs> okay. Come back. I'll just change my play. Okay.